Hello and welcome to another episode of Building More Than Just a Body. I'm Celeste Rains turk and I'm here with someone who I am so excited to introduce you to if you don't already know him because I just recently became friends with him and connected with him and he blows me away. He's absolutely awesome and just like we really connected and we share so many of the same ideas and values and I'm so grateful for him, and I had, had, had to introduce my audience to him. So his name is Steve Mack, and I am so happy to be introducing you guys to him. So Steve, take it away. Tell him what you're about. Let him know what you got. Wow, what an introduction. Thank you so much, Celeste. Now, this is awesome, and it's been awesome to connect with you, like, over the last few weeks, and, like, like we've become, like, really close, like, instantly, because... I don't know, everything we talk about all sort of aligns and the energy we've got matches and I, I, I find that amazing. Um, and what I'm all about, what I'm all about, I'm about this. I'm about connecting with people like you that are making a real, real difference in the world because where I come from and grew up with, I, I never realised that there was people like this in the world. I didn't realise that I actually had a message to share or I had anything that the world would want. But by by, like I say, associating with people like yourself and really, really finding out what I was put on the earth to do, really, like my purpose, um, using my life experience, which I've got a hell of a lot of life experience, like I, I, I don't like going back to all the times where, where I've been in toxic situations and like I partied hard, I'd done a lot of drugs, all that sort of stuff. I had that life and I had a lot of low times, a lot of sad times that I actually never shared with the world and I didn't know how powerful it would be until I actually started working with a lot of people who have been through similar situations and seeing that I can make a massive difference and and that's really been what I've like developed like very recently like I've only been like working with people and 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 like associating with people who are making a difference like yourself for the last I don't know six to eight months and and by doing that and at the same time like dealing with my demons from my past and all that sort of thing um it's been like really for me like my world's changed because i've been able to like i say work on myself but able to help so many people along the way just with my story and yeah like even thinking about where i've come from what i'm doing now just blows my mind so i i am so grateful for this right now like i love this like i say we've been chatting a fair bit and every time we chat just like this is awesome i have to pinch myself sometimes <laughs> Me too. Me too. It always gets me fired up. And that's why I'm just so excited to be sharing this energy with both of our worlds because I know we'll both be putting this to our audience. And it's just, it's such a powerful thing. And you mentioned one word that screams, 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 screams success and positivity and really bringing people and the right things and success into your life. So that one word is alignment. So tell me how you get aligned every day for awesome things like this oh it depends how do i get aligned every day i'm actually in alignment every day at the moment because i'm doing what i love it's it's wow. it is as basic as that i can tell you simple steps to take but what i found by by working on myself and, and and really working on everything in my life just figuring out what my values were where i wanted to go what my vision was and having a purpose i i i wake up i'm in alignment um, even when I do find myself like, well, I, actually lately, I haven't even really doubted myself. That's, that's how much right now I feel like I'm doing the right thing. Like the right people are around me, like yourself, like we've spoken about all the people around us because we're all heading in the same direction. There, there hasn't been really a time where I'm like, I have to check myself and like, it's, it's really hard to explain. And like, it, it just, even talking about it, if you had asked me six months ago about being in alignment, where I was heading and all that, this would have been a totally different conversation. It would have been, it really would have been, I would have been sitting here going, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. So what so, do you think um, you would have been thinking six months ago and how did that change? Six months ago, well, like, like I say, I've, I've, I've done a lot of personal development. Um, and it's with the people that I'm around now. It's they're, they're all on the same sort of mission. And um, I was at a point where I'm like, why do I want to revisit my past? Why do I want to remember stuff? Um, how is that going to help me 
move forward? How is that going to help me find what my my purpose is, or or give me this vision, or how is that going to help me have these goals, which I'd never thought about? Like I never really had goals before, even, and it did help because when I went back and realised that what I've been through can help other people. How I deal with it now, how I didn't have to forget, I just had to learn the lesson from it all. Then it started to click that all right. I can use this, like I say, to inspire people. And even to, to think six months ago that I can inspire people, even to say that now, that like it, it, it was something I wouldn't have even been able to say. But now I say it all the time. Like I inspire myself to keep going. Like every time I might do something, like I might post a video or something, like you seen mine yesterday, I'm like, wow, bang. Even I got pumped out of watching myself do that. So that's... That's six months ago, and, and now it's just, like I say, it's a totally different conversation. Yes, I love that. I think that's so, so fun and so true and powerful of what you can do because I've experienced the same thing where I'll watch a video of my back, and I'm like, I'm getting pumped up, and I listen to myself <laughs> talk every day. <laughs> so yeah. you know it's good. And and. Something that maybe has changed because of alignment I've noticed in my life too, other than being surrounded by awesome people like you, it's, it's really that you put more into the world because you understand what your power is. So what would you say to someone since you've been through this, you have this amazing story. What would you say to someone who says, Steve, I have no idea what my purpose is in life. How the heck can I find it? Wow. I'm not going to go into detail with this because this is this is common across the board with especially people that have been through a lot because they won't want to admit that they they have a purpose. They don't want to sh say to people, all right, I've been through a lot and I can help you because I stuffed up so many times. But in, in terms of people finding their purpose or finding out why they're here or whatever, they've really just got to, I don't know, it's a big one really. So you made me think now because it's so... And that one requires so much. I know there's so many different aspects to that. There, there is. I, I might simplify it. Um, and we were talking about it before in, in terms of what are people looking for, what feeling are they looking for out of life if they achieve something. And, and it's not all about themselves. Like we don't feel right unless we're contributing or helping people out. That's what I truly believe. And that's mm -hmm. when I started getting fulfillment and, and found my purpose. When I, when I knew... I felt by helping people that that was going to be part of what I did going forward. You talk to people about that and ask how they want to contribute. Most people will say, all right, I want to give back to society in this way and that. And, and that's a good way of finding out people's, their why or their purpose. It might be giving back to their family. It might be giving back to like society or whatever, or like even what we're doing by helping people that have been in similar situations. That's, that's a good way of, of finding people's purpose to simplify it. Like, like you would know, to, to talk to people about this, it's not a question anyone really asks themselves. It's a question I never asked myself up until recently. I didn't actually ask myself. I had my coach ask me. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so in terms of fitness, because I know you're very into fitness as well, and a lot of my audience is probably wondering, okay, so here's this guy who is helping people all over the world, and he's super fit. So what has fitness given you to contribute to your success and these breakthroughs you've been making? Well, I'm going to actually go back a little bit here because fitness was the thing that turned a lot of the stuff around for me. Um, I was never into the gym. Like I used to play sport and that all the time, but like I used to play sport for the social scene and then party afterwards. I was, I was pretty good at what I'd done, but I could have been so much better, but I never cared about it. I never looked after myself. I was very unhealthy. Um, and like I made a big decision a few years ago to work away um, and that took me away from that toxic environment. At the same time, I'm like, all right, I'm not around the same people anymore. I'm not around the same crowd. I'm not around the party scene. What can I do to fill in my time to look after myself? And fitness was it. Like I was in the mining game in like Outback Australia uh, in the middle of nowhere. I had no other choice but to go to the gym and – I didn't go about it right for the start, but just doing that physical activity actually helped me. Um, I've lost the screen here. 
One sec. No problem. Oh my goodness. There you are. <laughs> my Google Calendar just come up on the screen. I love technology. But what I was saying, yeah, like I sort of um I didn't do it right at the start by just doing that little activity but and then realizing I had to work on myself like through fitness. It took a few years, but that was really the catalyst for me to I started feeling better and I started like thinking clearer. Like, I was in a high pressure job and I was really good at it. Um like I was a supervisor and everything, I was looking after a lot of people. But I knew by getting into fitness and I was improving the way I could be around people to help them with the work situation, I'm like, I just built that belief. I just kept doing it and doing it. And then I got to a point, like like I said at the start, I didn't do everything 100%. Like I was around guys that had massive egos and I started to develop a bit of an ego about it too. Um, and it actually was really recently where I got right into my fitness like probably a very similar time, probably about 12 months ago, where I really started to look into it. I did did go into all the internet fads and all that and all the supplements and all that. And like, this is cool this week, this is cool that week, all that. But then when I started to get in touch with where I wanted to go in life, I knew fitness for me was number one. It really was. It was like, all right, if I get this right, the way I feel when I'm training, the way I feel after it, the way I'm around people... Like we spoke about before, every area of my life really improved because of my fitness improved. Um, and now I just love it. If I don't train for one day, it doesn't matter if it's small. I'm like, I, I actually feel like I'm letting myself down. That's, that's how much I love it now. Yeah, and you're right. And this does have an impact on all areas of life. And it's a very powerful tool. And because it impacts so many areas of our life, I can relate. Sometimes I'll go without it or even on a rest day because every day I'll still wake up and I'll take my dog on a walk or I'll do cardio of some sort. But, you know, sometimes just hitting the weights is exactly what you need, you know? Yeah. It's just such a, a cool, cool feeling to have this outlet. And personally, I got into fitness because – for the wrong reasons at first, honestly, like, this is exactly like what I'm trying to prevent in other people. It's like, I got into it from a place of self-hatred, which was, I don't like my body. I don't like the way I feel. I hate the way I look. And while those are valid motivations, they're not going to keep sustainable results. So digging deeper, just like you do for people in their own breakthroughs is what is what of course continue to see success. And it's about coming from this place of self-love and that's the message. And so now I'm curious, of course, how do you show yourself love every single day? Wow, that's cool. I wasn't expecting that. How do I show my self-love in terms of towards myself or I'm just happy yeah. with this. Yeah, I'm just happy with myself. Like I say, I, I get up every morning and I look at myself like, even when I go for a walk, there, there was times there where I wasn't happy with how I was or happy with him. But now I just get up and I'm just like, I'm just happy of where I've come from, where I am right now. I'm really present when I think about myself. I'm like, I'm here right now. I, I, I'm just really happy with where I am. Yes, we can always make improvements, but knowing the difference between wanting to make an improvement or being really happy with how we, we are within ourselves. Like, I'm so happy within myself now. I've never been happier. So it's just an automatic thing that the whole self-love thing, it's just there. It's just because I know that I'm, I've worked on myself to get to this point and every day I'm like, yes, this is awesome. And, it, and it's as simple as that. Like a lot of people overthink self-love. They overthink, well, I've got to put this out there. I've got to do this. It's as simple as just getting up in the morning and just saying, hey, you're all right, eh? This is cool. That's <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's so true. And it's as simple as just looking at yourself in the mirror or laying down when you wake up or go to bed and you just think, who am I today? Who was I today? Who would I like to be? And just tick off boxes and really ask yourself questions about how you feel about yourself and be honest because something that actually I have never shared with the world that I'm just going to share it right here, right now. Oh, so thanks, yeah. Steve, for oh, letting me I don't think to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> so here it is and it's kind of sensitive but um because I've never shared it but it it'll feel really good for me and I've been thinking about getting this off my chest and that is uh, like a verbally abusive relationship and um 
abused. And I know there's never an excuse for anybody to verbalize, verbally abuse anybody else. And there's never an excuse for someone to have to take it. Um, but I realized like looking inside, I was verbally abusing myself. I was telling myself things like, you're not worthy. You're not fit enough. Look at her compared to you. Oh my God. Like you're just, I can't believe you didn't do this today. Why would you have not done this? Why can't you do this? And I was verbally abusing myself, telling myself, you're not good enough. You can't do this. And that is exactly why I was drawing in this verbally abusive relationship. And I remember there was at one point where everything just like cracked. And then I, I like was able to just stand up for myself and be like, don't ever like deserve. And then all of a sudden it was like, that is what started my fitness journey. I couldn't expect anybody to treat me right or honestly or um, committed and um, not cheating without me making sure I wasn't cheating myself out of life. And then it, it all came back when I got into verbally abusive stuff. It was like, oh, I'm not showing myself love every day by talking to myself right. Even if I'm taking steps like eating healthy, working out is like a big shift to just say like what you just said. Hey, are you all right? <laughs> yeah. And, and that's it. And thank you for sharing that because you know what, that's so many people, but what happens is they won't admit that they have to work on themselves or they won't admit or they not admit they, it's a simple step to turn it around. You just got to realize or be aware, like you've just said, and like, all right, if I've got this abusive relationship or I've got these people around me, am I treating myself right? Am I attracting them because I'm not talking to myself right? Or I have no self-love and that's how it works. Like I used to attract people all the time because I was not happy with myself. The relationships I was in was people that weren't happy with themselves. So we'd always get this shit out that was about what we needed to work on. We'd like pick out of them and all that instead of, and we were, I was aware of it, but taking the step like you have to just say, hey, no, I actually have to work on myself. And like you said at the start, the person, if there it is in a relationship, they are probably in the wrong anyway, but you've got to question yourself, why? Why are they being like this? Yeah. Why? And if it's just them and they've just lost the plot, fair enough, they go. <laughs> but more often than not, it is because we're not happy with ourselves. Yeah. And it's... it's like, I'm glad you shared that because it's so true with so many people. And what happens is, especially in relationships, you might end a relationship and you'll, you'll, you'll go into another one without working on yourself. You'll still have that, that lack of self-love or something. So you attract a very similar person and the same thing will happen again. And, and instead of taking that step, it'll go over and over. And it's so many people in the world that do that. It's, um, it's a very strong message to, to be able to put out there if people can realize that and check it, like not straight away, you've got to, you've got to learn and you've got to live a lot of things. Um, but like, that, that's powerful. People need to take that on board. They, they, they really do. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's something that when you accept that you're responsible for everything that happens to you in your life, no matter if it's your choice or someone else's to speak to you a certain way or to do certain things, like you just have to accept some responsibility for it because you're responsible for the life that you're currently living. Um, so if you're not as fit as you want to be, if you're not as happy in your skin as you'd like to be, if you're not strong as you'd like to be, then you're not taking the steps that are necessary or speaking the way you need to be speaking and surrounding yourself like you mentioned environment is a huge deal and that's what's keeping you really aligned as well as you just know and if, if you can't accept responsibility change is very difficult and accepting responsibility um, and I love to hear from this accepting responsibility must be done for a place of acceptance and not hatred what do you think about that you're frozen. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I just yeah. asked you, um, like, what do you think about accepting where you are from a place of, or not accepting, well, um, acknowledging where you are from a place of acceptance rather than from a place of hatred? Because I was saying that I think that that's a huge key to actually being successful is that you have to. And I was curious as to what you thought about self-responsibility and how to approach it. Yeah, well, every, everyone is in life or where they are right now because it's their choice. No matter what 
they think they should have done all this and that. They've made the decisions all the way along. It doesn't matter who they're around. It doesn't matter what's happened in their work or their relationship. They've, everyone has always had a choice. I've always had a choice and I always used to blame exterior for, like exterior happenings or other people and all that. But as soon as I started taking responsibility for my actions and started thinking, all right, this is happening because of me. I always talk about yeah, your outer world's a reflection of your inner world. And, and it is. And as soon as you take responsibility for all your decisions or your inner world or all, all of that, until then you can't make a change. You can't, you can't take on new things. You can't move forward. It's just, it doesn't work that way. It's, um, I would say everything is a choice. And that, that was the biggest thing for me to, to realise that. And in terms of going back to my past, and acknowledging that, all right, I did make that choice instead of, oh, this happened because of this or this circumstance. I got in that fight because of these people had a go at me and all that. As soon as I, all right, I made that choice. What's the lesson? Move on. And it's really easy to do that. And so many people get it so hard that a decision comes up and it might be a simple thing is like, do I go in this direction or do I go in that direction? Do I step out of my comfort zone or do I stay in my comfort zone? Most people stay in their comfort zone. It was their choice. It's their decision. And they wonder why they're stuck in the same old thing. And especially when you talk about success, how many successful people have taken risks? All of them. Every one of them. Yes. And it, when I say successful, I'm not talking about rich. I'm talking about people who have got that fulfillment. They've just taken that one little risk and they take it over and over and over because they see the risk. The risk they're taking that most people will see as big, they say that's a small risk because compared to staying in the same spot and what they'd end up like if they didn't do that. Yes, I love that you said that. It is so true and it's true of all things, which is why I love connecting with you because seriously, like be it fitness, be it health, be it your business, be it life success in general, relationships, whatever it could be, you have to you have to come from that place and, and know that because – if you don't, it's just, it's not going to make sense. And you have to take that responsibility and you have to understand that you can change if you choose to. Exactly. And it's as simple as that. It's so simple. Everyone has a choice. I, I say I, that's a big part of my message. And people take that on and like, oh, I don't, I don't have that. And it's like, no. And I hear it all the time and it really frustrates me. It's, um, you, you feel like sometimes you're shaking people and say, you had that choice. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just you had that choice, and I, I could go deep with this. It's and like I say, the, the past I've come from. Like I used to get into a lot of trouble and that. And at the time, if I went to court or something like that, I still wouldn't accept responsibility. Mm-hmm. And and that's that was like in a deeper level. And I, when I talk to a lot of men, especially of going through troubled times, if it's alcohol, if it's drugs, or it's something in their life not working they still don't accept responsibility for it. And if they just accepted it and say, all right, that's shit what I've done, that's shit what I've been doing, okay. Like someone like me is not going to judge. They're worried about what other people think. As soon as they say no, all right, that's my responsibility. How, how can I learn from this and move on? But they, they just do not make that choice. And that's really, really frustrating sometimes. I, yeah, I like that you're using the keywords like learn and lesson because – no matter what happens in life, you're going to go through times of loss. You're going to go through times of what some people like to refer to as failures. And the choice is take it as a lesson and make it a success because you're given these opportunities and you go through these phases in life and things will happen. You'll run into bumps in the road. And it's all a matter of how you respond and not how you react because being reactive is is never a good choice but being responsive is totally in your power and um another another piece that i liked that you mentioned was that it's not something that people see as simple but it totally is and so yeah i have like a kind of deep question and i personally don't know the answer i mean i have some some ideas um but what do you think is the reason for people believing that this step is so hard? Well, the reason, the stuff, meaning making the choice or, or yeah, choosing to, choosing to learn. Choosing. And, yeah, choosing to learn from those things, you know, those mistakes or those happenings in their life. How, why is that so hard for people? 
because I believe we are addicted to pain. Mm. I believe that for some reason, uh, as humans, we're, we're drawn to that pain and then we get motivated. That, that's common, I believe, and that's, it is. And that, that's the only answer I can come up with because why would we want to get hurt over and over and over? Because so many of us, we don't learn the lesson and we do the same thing. I, I've lived it for years and years. I, I know what I did wrong. I know I shouldn't go back into that. I don't even like using that shouldn't word, but I'd always end up in a very similar situation. And the only thing I can think of is I go back to it. What happened after that situation? I get motivated and like just get motivated to do something and go harder, especially in my work. If I used to like play up or get in trouble, I'm like, shit, I've just got to work harder now. I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. And then I'd go through a similar situation deal with it exactly the same way as I done the first one, even though I knew I shouldn't have, and then get motivated to go harder and harder again. Um, and that's what I, that's, I think that's people all together. Uh, they, they're motivated in pain. Oh yeah. 100% true. They, it's, it's, it's common. And I think that it's because as humans, like we're animals and we are, we are literally born to survive. We, all we want to do is survive. And so a big part of survival is fear. And fear is used to keep us alive, so to say. However, given all the tools and resources we have now, if we can just take leaps of faith and take jumps and truly believe that they're going to benefit us, then this so-called survival, it won't be surviving it. And this sounds so cheesy now that it's in my brain and I'm saying it out loud, but it's thriving because you're choosing this path of, I'm not going to survive in this state that I'm in because you said something earlier a few minutes ago about how you can, I, you can like, you're making that choice to just stay there. And I believe that that's accepting that you're not worth being better. You're not worth putting time in yourself, effort, acknowledging what you're going through. Maybe you're not worth looking deep inside and those are problems. And those are reasons why you're not progressing because the survival pattern you're choosing is one where you accept where you are rather than one where you say, I'm accepting where I am, but I'm not going to expect this for myself anymore. And yeah. I think it's, it's really difficult when people expect to be more fit, to be healthier, to be more successful, to find their true passion, but then the action isn't there to take it because they're, they think that the truth behind their survival and the truth behind being comfortable and living this great life is remaining and staying the same and, and just making it work. But why make it work when you're in pain and it's hurting, just like you said, and wait until it's, you're breaking. Like why wait until you're broken to change? Like mm. accept and understand like it, it can happen right now today in any area of your life. Yeah. And it all comes back to the self-worth thing or believing that, that you are worthy of, of moving forward or evolving or that that's where it all comes back to and the cool thing about this this is what i've lived because i was the same over and over and over again but now i realize by accepting where i'm at accepting what i'm responsible for and all this and now i believe that i i am worthy to move forward i am accepting of all this these amazing things that come my way all these people who i used to put up on a pedestal and now just like no they're in my life i'm the same as them we're just all humans it makes such a difference when you look at it that way and then you're not in survival mode. You're in like, okay. you, you get up every day and you're like, go, go, go. What can I improve on? Where can I go? Who can I meet today? Not, not holy shit, this is going to happen today. I knew this was coming. Um, all right, I'm, I've been through this before. I'll deal with it again. It's, see how different that is? So different, the energy and just even the way you displayed yourself to people who maybe aren't watching, but to the ones yeah. who are listening, he literally like sunk in his seat, put his head in his hands because that's what that energy carries. And um, even just body language, it changes you. And um, that kind of leads me to this question that I have. So how do you think, how powerful do you think that portraying yourself a certain way that you hope to step into that position is? So what I mean is like, how powerful do you think it is to start living as the person and as the dream and the life that you want to be living before you necessarily have it? You've got to, you've got to, you've got to picture yourself as that person. You've got to be in that role already. You've got to visualize you being in that role. 
Because what happens is you visualize that and we, I do this all the time. I've already achieved what I want to achieve. I actually truly believe I am where I want to be because what happens is time and space just catches up. If you think about the steps you're going to take to get to where you want to be, if you think, oh, no, I'm stuck here. I've got so far to go to get to that person. You're never going to get there because you're worried about what's going to happen. But if you truly believe you're in that place now, like I truly believe that I'm already, all my goals and everything have happened. Like they keep evolving, yes. But I wake up in the morning, I'm like, yes, I'm in this amazing place because I seen this like six months ago. I knew I was going to get here and everything's just matched. It might sound a little woo-woo and stuff, but that's how it works. It totally is. Yeah, it totally is. And I've learned that in the <laughs> Oh no. Um, I was just saying it totally is how it works. And that's definitely, definitely just because when you step into that visual and you understand that that's what you deserve and you understand that that's what you have currently and it's already set in stone, there's nothing stopping you. And it's, it's just when you can visualize it, when you can imagine yourself in there, when you can see yourself, if, if, if it's, let's say it's someone who's like, I want to be fit. It's, it's a matter of stepping into what would the fit, fit person be doing? <laughs> what would the fit you be taking care of? Would the fit person or would the fit you be sitting and watching TV for four hours? Would the fit you be snacking on things every two minutes or binge eating? And all of that goes back to your mental aspect. How are you living? How are you choosing? And why are you making those choices? And that's why having a coach like you, having a coach like me to actually dig deep into those reasons is what creates breakthroughs. And so I have two more questions for you and I know we're going over, but I just like <laughs> love talking to you and I can do like four of these. So yeah. the first question is how has having a mentor changed your life? Wow. That's <laughs> like really easy to answer because it's like flipped it on my, on its head because if you come from a place like me, when, you, when I've been through a lot, I've attempted to forget about a lot, um, hid away from the world in certain things, like had the social mask on and everything and that, and actually having a mentor come into my life, I didn't go out and chase anyone with this vision, with this story that was so like mine, I resonated with that. Um, and when I was talking about before finding my purpose and all that sort of stuff, if I didn't have that coach like Lee, if I didn't have that, I don't know where I would be. And that's the truth. Like I've actually forgotten about where I was like 10 months ago. I had like planned what they were now because this has just totally transformed my life. And it's well, having not just a coach and mentor like Lee. Lee's like one of my best mates now. Seriously, he... he a coach or a mentor has your best interest at heart. And for me, finding the right person and that way, that's like, – I can't put words to it sometimes. I, like I say, I pinch myself when I get up in the morning now. I'm like, this is a life that I, I never really imagined. I did recently because this is what I started visualising. But <laughs> to have that, that coach who's got my back no matter what because he has my best interest, just at heart that's that's awesome because you can have friends you can have family but seriously most people in the world yes friends and family are awesome when push comes to shove for your personal growth they don't have your back they have their back and that's why the way lee is and regan the same is they've got your back no matter what they want the best from you because that's their mission that's their vision Oh, and that's my mission and my vision. Oh, I know that's your mission and your vision. Yes, exactly. And it's it's a powerful thing to be a coach and have a coach who wants this for you and who really wants the best for you and would any day be able to refer to you as a great friend, if not a best friend. And an acquaintance or whatever it may be, that's not good enough because your mentor, your coach is putting hours and hours into your life and your success because they truly care just like you said and it's it's um hard when people don't want to coach because 
the, uh, the coach is there to be there for you and, and help you through everything. And that's what both you and I have learned and being coaches ourselves, we know this because it's like, oh, our heart burns to do this. Like our heart is literally yeah. the passion inside us. Like that fire inside us is literally to witness and facilitate transformations and breakthroughs on the most, the greatest level we possibly could imagine. And we think even more highly of our clients than they probably do of themselves because we yeah, know exactly. what they're possible. Like, you know, you know exactly what I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And when with, with me, how much has changed my life? It's not that, all right, Lee's rocked into my life and we're best buddies. Everything's cool. He's just told me everything I want to hear. No, it's the opposite. It's people in life. They expect like someone, if it is a coach, they're like, all right, they're going to tell me what to do. I can fix it. That's cool. They know what's missing. No, it's about them pushing us so we work it all out ourselves, them seeing where we're falling short. Like with Lee, I can tell you, I had times there like, why am I doing this? What is this for? Why? Why do I feel bad? Why is he pushing me so much? Why does he want this now? Why is he asking these questions? And so we can realize in ourselves that that's what we have to work on. Like I, I get pushed all the time. And as you can imagine in beast mode with being men and all that, us men need to be broken sometimes. I, I've been broken. So... It's, um, it's the cool part I like about it because as coaches, if we just told everyone what they wanted to hear straight away, the world would be, it, it doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. It, it really doesn't. It's, um, especially when it comes to, um, what would you say? Or well, we're talking about health and fitness here, an easy example to give. You're not going to say someone who's like you spoke about before, if they need to lose weight, you're not just going to say, hey, it's okay if you have a cheat meal. True. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, it it has to be calculated and planned, and it has to be part of their lifestyle. It can't just be, "Hey, uh, did you have a chocolate bar today?" Yeah, I did. Great, good for you. That's not how it works. No, no, no. Just train harder next time. No, it's not exactly, and that's that's the thing. It's the whole coaching thing. You you want the best out of like clients a lot. Ourselves, we got coaches. That's that's what you want, and you want to be pushed because. I, I know you'd be the same. The more I get pushed, the harder I'd go. I don't like go in my feminine and like act like, well, why is he pushing me? I don't want to do this anymore. It's like, all right, how can I improve or how can I go harder? How can I be? And, and that's the cool thing about it. And I don't know if that's the way I get coached, if you're the same or. Um, it's interesting because I think I've never, well, okay, I have in like sports and stuff. And I don't respond necessarily well to someone yelling, but I respond really well to being pushed out of my comfort zone because I understand that that's the only way you can grow. It is literally the only way if you take that step and that jump. And I think I lost him. So we're going to let him get back on. I'm going to message him right now. We lost Steve. I see that we have some viewers on. We lost Steve. He should be coming back on soon. I wonder, I, I can see that we have people viewing this, but I wonder who you guys are. If we're friends on Facebook and you're viewing this, let me know. Just waiting for Steve.
we're, we're just waiting for Steve. <laughs> Those of you jumping on this and watching, you're going to probably have to fast forward a little bit. Which is a tiny bit. From five viewers. I'd love to know who is doing this right now. Send me a message on Facebook or just write on my wall and say, hey, that was me viewing because Google Hangouts doesn't tell me. Waiting for Steve. We've been talking a lot about awesome stuff, so you're going to definitely have to watch this back. It's going to be a lot longer um, than most just because of this little bit of a dip. For anybody who's on and has not yet done so, building more than just a body is something you need to join as soon as possible if you're not in it because it's my group and it's all about this, basically what this episode's preach, which is fitness is so much more than just building a great body. And it really comes down to loving yourself, having confidence, motivations, <laughs> everything. So if you haven't yet joined building more than just a body on Facebook, because I put stock and information in there and I'm having a giveaway right now so you could potentially win something awesome but that's reserved for my really more than just a body group to know. <laughs> hey Steve. I love that people are still viewing me just sitting here <laughs> talking about how Steve's gonna come back on. Well he is calling me for messenger. Hmm. Hey you guys, so I have Steve on my Facebook Messenger and we're just coming on to tell you that we're going to do a part two because uh, things are a little bit crazy over in Bali with the uh, internet. So anyways, we're both going to say bye and I'm just going to wrap this up by saying, you know, thank you so much Steve for coming on and we'll do a part two soon. Uh, thank you very much, Celeste. And yeah, the, the old um, internet in Bali, it's very frustrating sometimes. Um, we're on a roll too, so I'm really looking forward to part two of this. I don't know where it's going to go, but yeah, really, really grateful for your time today. And everyone who's watching too, awesome. Yes, yes, I am very grateful for your time as well, and I'm looking forward to part two as well. I don't even remember what the last thing I said was, so um, it'll be <laughs> really, really fun to just have another one. It's just like a really good excuse to keep it going. So anyways, um, I'm going to end it on the live feed. So thank you so much to everybody who's watching and to everybody who tuned in. Just remember, wherever you are, make it absolutely awesome, and be sure to check out Steve Mac on social media but trust me there's going to be a part two to this so you can absolutely find him and i'll put everything that you need to find him in the description okay have an awesome day